Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Fire. Hi, Dave. Now, do we have a pink and yellow thing going together? <laughs> we do. We do. Pink and yellow, <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is The Skating Lesson. We are going to be discussing everything that happened this weekend at all of the summer competitions. So if you are new here, please subscribe below. Smash that like button. I'm on location at my parents, Jonathan, because they have wonderful central air. And this is very mm. important in my old apartment building. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I am still at Chautauqua. That's a disclaimer always for the background, where it's 20 degrees lighter. Oh. I mean, it's so much breezier here. It's so nice. It's we so are nice. in heat. You ever but, see that video, It's Hot as Hell, when she's like, it is 98,000 damn degrees. It and is that's you. That's you right now. Okay. <laughs> So I've been saving up to buy a place and oh dear, you know, I felt every, uh, every saved penny. <laughs> last yeah, time. I bet you did. Ooh. Goodness, goodness. Yes. Um, and I like thank you for being flexible with our filming dates because I'm still teaching at Chautauqua and the student with the lead in the Janacek's The Cunning Little Vixen with the orchestra last night got COVID on Saturday. Tell me something. What is the cunning little vixen about? Because is this a biblical whore? Because you know what? <laughs> it sounds like it could be a good skating program. Maybe you feel no, like it would be, but like for like a show because it's a bunch of animals. And then like the main baritone guy is the forester, but there's all these different animals. So this is like a John Curry seductress situation. Like a... it's a strawberry on ice kind of moment. Oh, love it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But like lush Czech music that I was like sight reading. <laughs> <laughs> so I could fill in for this poor ailing baritone. So I would rather have been watching Gracie Gold, but I was otherwise preoccupied. So um, and my fancy friends now want you to come to their house and enjoy um, their Petro. So they have a Petrov grand piano and I didn't know what this was. So I, you know, wanting to yeah. learn, I said, well, what's a Petrov? How is it different than other? It's a Petrov. It's yeah. a Petrov. <laughs> it was not explained to me. I had to ask Christopher Schumann, what is a Petrov? He said, it's handcrafted. It has usually a warmer sound than either a Steinway or a Yamaha. That's all I was asking for, Jonathan. It yeah, was the a, Yamaha gets a little brassier, right? It was like the yeah. gay gasp. Like, <laughs> it's a Petrov. But see, now you're learning. You're learning. Everything like, is a brand name, Dave. Yeah. It's like the Dennis Petrov of pianos, apparently. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, I mean, he was so That's what it was. I was like, there's got to be a skater Petrov. Yeah, Dennis. That yes. Was yes. That's for Luchan. Yeah. Okay. This? Okay. All right. Well, Ms. Gracie Gold returned to action at Skate America. I mean, sorry. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. maybe. <laughs> Is that wishful thinking, Dave? <laughs> Listen, I texted Justin Dillon about it. He gave the best U.S. figure skating response. Okay. I said, Justin, skating is in the shitter. Gracie looks great. You'll have people scalping tickets in Norwood. This will, Andrea Joyce will make great TV out of this. It's what the people yeah. need and want. And frankly, all the other girls look like a hot mess who are up for that spot. Well, yeah, because sometimes you would think, oh, use this spot to cultivate someone young and exciting. But right now that sort of is Isabeau and Lindsay. Do you know what I mean? We don't necessarily have someone who needs that experience. We have sort of several people who have had experiences but haven't sort of taken it any further. So why not just give us the feel good choice, which I think would be crazy. Did a triple lutz, triple toe in both programs, and you didn't need review on either one. You didn't need no. a microscope. You didn't need slow motion. There was no question that that girl no. did a triple lutz, triple toe, both programs. They're tinkering with the layout. Will she do the flip? Will she not? She's supposed to be competing again in about a week uh, in Potomac, uh, most likely. So she'll get another outing out there. And she's training pretty hard. It was a new program and they are, you know, revving but up. But seemed smartly planned. She didn't throw the kitchen sink at that free skate. You know what I mean? She was sort of, she got the triple triple out there. It didn't need to be loaded like she may dream that it, it will be at some point. You know, I, I felt like there seemed to be a steadier plan in place here. Well, I don't know. I'm I'm optimistic, cautiously. So, so the key to me, for me, in telling what her state was like, is that so many times we've seen her do the triple X, triple toe, but when she doesn't believe in herself, we'll usually see a mistake on the loop on the other end of the rink, which is next. And there was no mistake. She went from the first element to the second element to the third to the fourth. We haven't seen that from her in a really long time, maybe ever, uh, yeah. except for a few and far between moments. So I was 
hardened, but you could tell that there had been some real training from, you know, between the elements. I do like the music for her in the free. Yeah, it totally works. It totally like, works. Yeah, I like it better than East of Eden, I have to say. East of Eden to me isn't the best choice for her, but. It's a little, I'm gonna say dainty, but it's a little precious and her skating isn't precious, it is powerful. So yeah, I, I, I agree with you on that. Well, the reason why I think it's a smart choice is you know skating fans and the public, very emotional, right? <laughs> it evokes feelings of Michelle Kwan. People remember that Michelle was with Frank, Gracie was with Frank, it didn't end well. Oh, she's making a comeback. She's, she's using East of Eden. Oh my God, it's emotional. Gracie looks great and we love her. And we Full love circle story. moment, yeah, 100%. You know exactly 100%. how the, the fans are going to react, right? Yeah. But, but you know, it's interesting because last summer, we had also been hearing that the training was going great, but then she sort of was switching things up and it seems like they might just be sticking to a plan here. And it seems the most probable for me. She was looking really good last year. And then she went to Europe and kind of lost some confidence and momentum. Disrupted that momentum, yeah. And it just seems like now they're just playing it, which may be the fact that it's a post-Olympic season, the, pressure is off there's no hail mary comeback opportunity other than for personal satisfaction right she's not right. going to be on the front of everything and can skate for skating sake and make it and i i thought that she looked very um credible next to the other skaters it didn't look like a huge drop off i mean she didn't do as many triples as they did because you know, she had mistakes in the second half but i thought that she the quality of her skating was up there I thought, which we haven't seen in the past because in the past when she got out under pressure, things got rocky. And I yeah. thought this was huge. I thought the short was fantastic for her. She does need speed. The footwork sequence needs to be more flowy, less of a smoke break. But I think these are all things that they know. And her spins were more trained, which I think was the biggest indication. So yeah, I- It was a really pleasant watch, both, both programs. It was very endearing to see. So I- <laughs> I'm with you. I say go sentimental for Skate America and give her the spot. I don't even think it's just sentimental. I think she could be in the top half of the competitors and make a statement. I think she could maybe compete with Amber Glenn, depending on how Amber's training is going, and make a statement of powerful skaters. It would be a great story. It's the first Skate America without the Russians. It's the first Skate America in a smaller venue. Think of the energy that could happen when she comes back. It could be a great made for TV moment. Uh, to me, there are so many smart marketing things yeah. about this. And I don't think Boston it's- Boston is a very prominent city in the career of Gracie Gold. Yeah, yeah. For good and bad. Good and bad. Exactly, right? exactly. Full circle exactly. moment. And they could bring that up. They could, and it would be almost like believing in her after everything, a little full circle. Yeah, full circle moment, I yeah. think. When, and I think they need to dangle the carrot a little bit to get her. To the know. combo alone makes it so much more an exciting option than I believe all the others available to the Federation yes. at the time. <clears throat> I don't know if they'll go that way. I don't know what their strategy will be. Again, I'm always in favor of like giving the young gun an extra chance, but we don't, again, I don't think that's the position we're in with the I think ladies. we'll know more after next week with Cranberry, you know, seeing Sonia Hilmer, Hannah Harrell, those are the other ones who are up for it. But I don't think they did anything at Glacier that was better than Gracie. I mean, Sonia looks good, but doesn't really have this experience and isn't super young either. I think with Grace, you know she has world-class qualities and I was gonna say potential. And you're doing that for the fans as much as anything else. Frankly, which the sport needs and US figure skating needs. Plus, I think it would make the skating community happy. Yeah, I think more a different group would come out for it. And I think she's really good. Yeah. Um, and that, that could be interesting, invigorating. And frankly, when you have a dark horse like Gracie, it would make all of the other skaters train just a little bit harder if they knew you don't know what she is going to right. do or what she, it's kind of like Tanya Harding. You don't know what is gonna happen when Tanya shows up. Exactly. <laughs> 
Gracie has that kind of talent, so. I, I agree, you, and still does. You can still see it in that combo. You're like, whoa. Yes. Still better than anybody else. Yeah. What is your take on the Lindsay Isabeau situation? Who This has been debated, um, you know, in the comments section on the internet. Who do you think was better at this competition? Well, okay. So in the short program, for instance, I felt they were both kind of going for a similar overall vibe. Mm -hmm. And I felt that Isabeau had better packaging for that okay. with the program and the music overall. What did you it think felt of the music? A, a little less tired than Aaron Wes, which to me felt so obvious at this point. And the other was just that much more sophisticated and interesting. Okay. Um, where they both fell short for me is is about doing just sort of a warhorse classical mm -hmm. or balletic piece would be a no-brainer to me mm -hmm. this sort of went nowhere both pieces didn't climax they didn't have a beginning middle and an end it was just sort of one of these run-on kind of moods i felt and so both of them were hard for me to envision that sort of standing ovations national moment because the energy was all askew. So then in the free, it almost did not matter to me. I happen to prefer Isabeau's um, sort of overall deportment. I think I'm trying to really look at why I say that. Lindsay is hitting prettier positions, I find. I can see that they're really working on that. She rushes into them. So like mm -hmm. even sometimes at the beginning of the program, like there's like a slow, what could be a slow like leg, sort of lift moment, but she sort of rushes it a bit. So even though the position looks fine, it is, there's something hurried about it. And that's when Michelle Kwan was talking about like the toothpaste out of the tube, slow idea. Like, I don't get that from her yet. And Isabeau just inherently has that, so. Isabeau does. Um, do you remember when Michelle Kwan was in that fluff piece with Caroline Jang, 2008 Nationals, they had her working with her mentor, I mean, the agent set this up, the one that worked yeah. with both of them. But they had Michelle like guiding her and she was talking about Caroline. It's about from here on up. And yes, that's not skating skills, right? That's yeah. not what people are, but in terms of performance and projection, Lindsay, Lindsay has beautiful arms, beautiful uh, leg extension. And she's actually like, she does this like big forward lunge into her front, uh, like into her first jump in, in the free, which is really beautiful. But what Lindsay lacks is a natural, ta-da. Like if they could just get her to work with an acting coach or a, you know, some sort of miming coach, just something, someone on engagement to like read across a theater because it's the one thing she's missing. In an up sort of thing. And that must feel so weird. When I see, you know, practice footage from all of these arenas, there's no reason you would be looking up where the wall meets the ceiling. And yet you almost need that level of projection, I find, for mm -hmm. when they're in the competitive arena. But again, that's the benefit, I think, of all those people doing shows to big crowds that are up and open, is they just inherently return with more presence in this general area, like you're saying. But again, it must be hard to practice that in. She has come out of her shell a little bit over the last okay. couple of months. People that have seen Lindsay, she's very serious. Another interesting thing about her is that she competes up. Mm. So she has had an ability for the jumps to be more rotated under pressure, to land more of those jumps. She wasn't practiced a week before the competition. She didn't look good at all. Okay. And was just, you know, she had been in Europe with Benoit. She came back. She was not <laughs> in stamina mode, right? They were working on that uh, free skate. It was a struggle. <laughs> and um, she turned it on in the week, but like each day got better. And then in the competition, wow, which is impressive. That's a real competitor to me. I yeah. would like to think I would be that way. Yeah. I'd like to think you'd also like to see obviously more consistency in practice, but you'd have to get in shape. First, <laughs> if I had right? to pick. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure she was working on choreography when she was in Europe. So it was interesting to see her that I think she really needs more speed in the second half because she's never going to be as upbeat and like camera friendly as Isabel, right? Like that's just Isabel's talent. 
That's yeah. not going to be your talent. An inherent effervescent quality to her that I think can't be taught. Yeah. But Lindsay could have <clears throat> way more speed and power and stamina. And I think that that's what they really need to work on. And then I would send the music off. I don't know who Benoit uses as his editor. I don't know if he uses Hugo Schwinard. I would send it to Hugo and have him just amp up that second half. It's good. That's when, but... the, that's when it starts just petering. And I'm like, we're right at the point in the program where we kind of need a resurge of interest. And it's just sort of like fading away. A cartwheel adds the interest, but the music needs to really kind of carry it. There are certain skaters, mm -hmm. Yuna Kim, the music carried her and made her look even more performative. Yeah. I think she wasn't performative. I'm saying the music was, a, was smartly selected and emphasized certain things. Yeah. And I yeah. think that if Lindsay can build, boost the music, work on this uh, to look more excited when she's competing, uh, to just show that even if it's fake um, and to just give more speed in the second half, I think it would make a big impact um, in the performance. That's, I don't think the Arn was a bad choice, I think she needs a little more speed to really match that music. Um, Just given that it was sort of apples to apples on that yes. one, to me, the Isabeau choices were just that much more sophisticated. I so think Isabeau did together. her program. You ditched so, the short? Yes. And I predict that Why? she- Why? I think it's lovely sound, right, of the music for the first 35 to 45 seconds. It does not change tempo. It does not change mood. And to me, it just feels, you called it a run on, right? In the short. Yeah. And I yeah. thought that it was, though it was very sophisticated, Isabel is so slow on the ice and she's so mm. beautiful. And I appreciate so many qualities. It, she's wonderful to look at, but it, when she skates and you see her covering ice, not on camera, but in person, and you could really see it in the far shot, it's like she's skating through mud. Yeah. And when I am watching and I'm I, like, I feel the urge to like want to push her. Right. And I feel like, and you imagine that some judges are going to feel that and some won't. But when you feel like this, oh my God, you've got to push energy. And it's weird because each position and turn that she's hitting is so perfect and well done and lovely. But at the same time, it's not, it's not covering any ice, it doesn't have any speed and it doesn't have any power. Mm -hmm. And that also makes me afraid of the jumps. If you notice, Mia Callen also hasn't had speed or power and she grew a little bit and has temporarily, or perhaps who knows, but she's lost those quads uh, as consistent as they were. And some of her other triples, when we saw her, that could affect Isabeau too, as she grows, if she doesn't develop the speed to really match what she's doing. And right now she has a higher level of jump than speed. Right, like she's, and that creates that kind of cranking situation. Well, especially in those combinations, you sort of see some. Even some on her solo loop, if you watch, she goes from the left to the right, and it's like cranking her back. Yeah. Which can, then you go up, and that's like an Terry back injury waiting to happen. But like you have to like go back and watch how severe she goes to the left and then to the right, and just think of her lower spine <laughs> doing that how many times a day. Yeah. Um, to get that twerky rotation. I would also, and it's weird because she is the one who's like, she's who US figure skating has to like hammer this home, right? And she's gonna look great on TV. I don't think the short accomplishes it. And I think last year's program emphasized her good qualities and masked her deficiencies better. Mm, okay. She just didn't care. I think both longs last year and this year, complete misses. I think her program from two years ago was better. Um, I think that they have both been flops for me. I don't like either okay. one. I think her packaging looks dated. And I think she's such a special mm -hmm. skater that she is capable of more. It's weird, but when she was in junior, she did Kisas, 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 I wanna say for the short Kisas. and Malaganya for yeah. the three. And they were both fresher and more energy. It's almost like they tried to date her, but between the between the like heavy dresses and the seriousness of the music, it's 
it's like very fiddler on the roof grandma with the hair and everything like they've aged this young effervescent girl into like I don't know this like dated very serious skater that feels put on like they're trying to overemphasize okay. the fact that she's sophisticated but if they actually just picked more of a straight piece of music I think it I think less is more in, in, like yeah. a more simple dress with that's not so long and not so overdone. It's just my opinion. But. Well, and something almost pastoral, like I'm picturing like light flutes and woodwinds and like a yeah. lovely, like sort of nature themed classical piece. Like again, they, the PCS would just be waiting for her there. And yeah. I think the free misses that also because it's just sort of so fake. I think she has a lightness to her, right? And last yeah. short emphasized it, right? With the swan type movements. And it brought up the fact that she has this effervescence. These both pieces have a heaviness to them that fight against that quality. Yeah. Where, and look, she's copying Sasha Cohen, my sweet and tender beast with the free, but like with a heavier version, mm. it just, not my, not my favorite. Okay. Yeah. I don't think either piece of music was great that either girl used. I don't, there was no home run for me, but I just, I find that they missed the mark uh, with Isabeau this year. I just, I think, you know, it looked like she was working with Lori Nichol and Carolina Costner and I didn't see it as much. And I know, you know, she works with Carolina. So everyone's going to say, oh my God, I see such a difference. I see the speed now I see, but I, I, look, she's got beautiful positions, but the lack of speed will kill her, especially against the Japanese, right? She's well, and the, and the jumps do look a little bit peculiar at times, you know. <clears throat> and yeah, but the Japanese skaters use speed as part of the equation to get more height, right. to get more distance, to right. get more power. When you're up against them head to head, not at US nationals, but at the world championships, that's gonna hurt her. And I do think she's someone that's in it for medal. This may be her best shot. She could grow in a year, right? Right. Look at Alyssa Liu's career. Here, there, done, right? With Isabeau, this is her moment. Russia's not here. The Japanese, you know, Kaori is good. Luna is good. We don't know who else in Japan. This is her moment to really make a play. And the USF, the US Figure Skating Federation's moment to make a play. So I think- Isn't that interesting? I just so don't consider that a possibility. Of her meddling? I, yeah, is that I, just between the Japanese ladies and the Korean ladies and Luna, I don't know. I guess it just never occurred to me that she could be that much in it. But maybe I need to rethink that. I have not been thinking of any US woman anywhere near there. But. This is a wide open field this year. Yeah, I, you're, you're very right, yeah. It's gonna come down to who has a good season. It's gonna come down to who starts building momentum. And I think having the right vehicles. I would let Isabeau do these programs one more time. And then when we get closer to Skate America, I would go back to the old short. Yeah. It's and everyone will be like, oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, yeah. lovely, <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Everyone, they won't care that she did it. They'll be like, oh my God, we have a, a US lady who's a contender. They'll be so happy. No one will give it that it was done a year ago. Yeah, I don't think so. When it wasn't getting as much airtime. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Remember, yeah. last year was all about those Russian ladies anyway. That's right, right. that's right. Unfortunately, the news cycles still are, but okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Also, Ava Ziegler um, was there and has tons of potential, I think, and speed and raw quality needs consistency. And she can muscle jump sometimes, get overexcited, but she has real spring and real talent. So it was good to see her there. And hopefully she will skate a little bit up because she's always someone that also is more emotional skater and skates up in competition. So I used to practice with her. Her mother is Patricia Mansfield. Oh, okay. Her mother is intense. 
<laughs> Even with me, when I would come into the ring, Patricia would be like, are we going to see the axle today? On one foot? Yes, Patricia. <laughs> like, <you know. laughs> Listen, she was watching, okay? Okay, clearly. Heather wasn't yeah. coaching Ava per se, but she was watching from those bleachers and she was going to walk down there, okay? Okay. <laughs> the right. other one is we need to pay attention to Julia Lautova, Jonathan. Now, do you remember her as a skater? Oh, yes, of course. Because, you know, any sort of energy that you think Lindsay is lacking... Julia has in spades. Okay. Again, I think that's not surprising, right? Yeah. Julia is a hot tamale, okay? She is a bulldozer. <laughs> you know, certain ranks have like an order where they put the music on or they have someone that wears a belt. That does not happen in the Jersey ranks, okay? Especially in Hackensack, it's dog eat dog. Julia is known for hogging that music box. Those girls redo those programs and they will push in front of you. Which if you're a skater, you want Julia on your side, like she is bulldozing, okay? Okay, okay. Now Julia goes head to head with like the rink manager of Hackensack, Jen K is like also a personality we're gonna need to discuss this year because she runs a tight ship and she's watching everything, all right? She, okay. is, she is underpaid for the level of service that she is giving that rink because those other employees, like the guys that are part of the family that own the rink, they're Finding like, you could walk through. The, are they there at the counter? Are they not? Your minute over on the ice, Jen K is going to notice and she's going to make okay. sure that that card is punched. Okay. Okay. She, okay. She is just there to torture all of those coaches. Okay. So Stage she, manager type. Okay. Listen, she has gone head to head with Lautoba. They are both alpha women. Okay. So that would be intense. Yeah. Alpha. Okay. Julia is like the Atari of Staten Island. If Atari is Manhattan, Julia is Staten Island, all right? Yeah, I was gonna say, Julia doesn't bring us necessarily the same wardrobe game. You know what, when she was wearing Victoria's Secret uh, pink Sweat sweatpants suit. at the Philadelphia competition, that upset me, all right? And I let Julia know that this is not gonna happen again. We had to talk to Olga about this last year when her husband was wearing that hat at all the competitions he thought it was good i mean luck. that's part of the packaging if you're trying to make sure she appears up appear up with her yeah give them permission to know it's okay that she's champion yeah listen julia we'll go shopping okay next competition i want you looking like a million bucks yeah this is you know, sometimes I think she was probably so aggressive about the competition that she didn't know. And it's fun because this year, Jonathan, on the Junior Grand Prix, all the Hackensack kids that I skated with are all- They're in it to win it. Together. Okay. I can tell you about all of the mothers, all of the <laughs> kids. So Kirk has this little rival, Sasha Fegan, Kirk Hageto. He's like the showman that I posted. Right. And then there is Sasha, who's a, like a year younger, and he's not a junior yet, but they have been like against each other and they push each other in the rink and they're real opposites. Like Sasha takes ballet and he's very serious and Kirk is like a ham and <laughs> is- The fluff you know, pieces are writing themselves. Okay. And I'm just going to say, if Jen K posts a photo or congratulations to one of them, there is another mother who will be like, excuse me, can you post my son? And you know what, this is what we like about the rink, okay? They all, work, they all work with Nina Petrenko, who is very talented and very terrifying. And, <laughs> <laughs> and very glamorous. And you know, Nina likes to go to Paris and vacation with Sasha Cohen's mother. Another woman, very glamorous, very scary, allegedly. So <laughs> from people that competed against Sasha back in the day. I think it's perfect when they go on vacation. That together. tracks. That tracks. That, yeah. They are peas in a pot. They like to go to Paris at the wine tasting. I mean, maybe five times a year. I mean, I don't know. Lovely. How long... That sounds delightful. Champagne taste, Jonathan. Are kind of women, right? I mean... Kind of. Yeah, I'm all about yeah. that. Yeah. But... Nina knows how to live the finer things in life when she goes- Which we game. love about her. Okay. We love that for her. We yeah. do. We love that for okay. her. You know? <laughs> the Facebook posts are um, 
not inexpensive. You know, that's what we. There it is. Oh, there it okay. is. Yeah. Listen, she's putting in the work with all those people. Yeah, really? she has the right to re reap the rewards. So Lautava's daughter, Skylar, competes against this girl, Mia. And they are like head to head all the time. And Nina works with both of them. So Mia's mother, Mia, I used to skate with Mia and she's super talented, really good skating skills. And the mother would bring Nina breakfast and coffee every day. Every, listen, these Smart. mothers in Hackensack, they are doing the most, okay? To yeah. get their kids ahead. Like you yeah. don't even know. All right, this is gonna <laughs> be a great season. In the juniors here, we have Mia Bargo, who's like a little Sasha cohen -y. But then we have Katie, who's like a silent killer. And I used to skate with Katie more than Mia. And Katie, like, she doesn't care who's on the ice. Like, I used to be working the axle on a circle, right? And, like, it was very important because Galena has, like, very strict technique on the axle. And if you deviate... Big trouble. Yeah. Katie will come right up behind you. She doesn't care. She skates in the other direction. Everyone, <laughs> you know, naturally, those people always got to watch out for them on the rink. And she is a gritty, gritty girl. Her hey. mother also terrifying don't even know why it's just the vibe like she They'll probably do very well <laughs> yeah. she did a great short program okay and i'm just saying that and mia is like a tiktok star you know and i used to sit there you know people leave us comments how often are they yelling at us jonathan often <laughs> right i once heard mia talking to kirk while i was putting my skates on and she was like people are always asking me for shout outs on tiktok and I just tell them no. And I was like, oh my God, I could learn a lot from this like 11 year old or 12 year old. Amazing, like, yeah, like, there's something to that, yeah. <laughs> how often is it Drew Meekins tagging me on Instagram? And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Mia's like, no, no. know your worth, honey. I was impressed, yeah. you know what? she skates like it, all right? She, okay. she is a lout of a girl. She's so pretty that Nina like is so nice to her. I don't okay. even think <laughs> like, okay. I think it's just like a love fest. Okay. Like she can do the ballet moves and Nina can like recreate her ballet days. I don't mean you're giving us all the like the reality TV background for the Junior Grand Prix. This is the some good uh, plot exposition we're getting. Speaking here. of it, Nolan from you know, Nolan Carney from TSL Live, he watches the Hack and Sack Live Barn every day. He said, I turned, he said, it's better than dance moms. Now that he knows the coaches, listen, Julia was saying something to Lindsay. She just skated away. She's over it. Well, then it's just like a real show. You could he was watching it. it at 1230 in the morning. I got a text. <clears throat> you got to turn on live bar. Okay. Oh my gosh. That is so funny. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. And he, I didn't think, realize he had a YouTube channel. That's why I watched Deanna. Yeah, well, let's see. Don't think that like Hackensack is a camaraderie. Those coaches all don't like each other, okay? You have to realize they will take your student in a heartbeat, okay? I don't think anyone was thinking that. <laughs> Julia goes between the two rinks. You know, Hackensack tries to have these contracts where the coaches are exclusive, but Julia knows she has the kids. So like when Montclair goes to their summer schedule, she'll just bring them to Hackensack for two months. You think they're gonna turn down her business? And then, because then the manager's like, but well, what if the kids follow her? I don't know, but it's great, okay? When I post anything, Julia, the rink manager's like, can you post one of, one of our resident coaches, please? Uh, you know, how about one of our residents here? One of the Hackensack coaches? And I'll be like, I didn't see a banner for me up in the rink. You know, I didn't, yeah, I didn't, I didn't yeah. see, right? I don't, yeah. I don't see a Dave Lee's banner in hack and sack it's still they getting had, worked on or what's happening <laughs> listen, they had a poster you used to walk into hack and sack and like my poster was on the wall it was replaced now granted maybe with like robert who was the junior national champion but it's still her you know <laughs> you still felt that sting okay oh my god robert is one of those kids where when i used to have my lesson with galena if she saw one of the kids and they were doing something that upset her she would pull them over to her. And she didn't like Robert's skating skills one day. And like, I don't even know if Robert knew who she was or anything other than like this scary old lady, right? And she's like, 
your skating skills out of that axle. They look like my dog Osha after he takes a shit. <laughs> Listen to your coach. <laughs> God. Inspirational stuff. <laughs> I bet he wouldn't forget it. <laughs> you know, skating is a very uplifting sport, John. I was just going to say, you know, I mean, <laughs> if only there was another way you could have said it and accomplished the same thing. Maybe there is a way. But... Listen, it happened. Okay. <laughs> and now I will be intrigued to look at his axle as it's moving forward. I bet he's worked on it. Um, okay. Yeah, hopefully. I'm sure he remember. We'll have to ask him, but he'll be at the second junior Grand Prix, so he'll be there okay. with Kirk. There we'll and keep Thomas. an eye out there. Okay. You know, Kirk could work on his skating skills a bit uh, and his speed. Uh, he has all of like the chutzpah, but he needs a little refinement. I would say he could work with Igor Lukanen, but Anton and Igor maybe not the best of friends. I don't like, listen. Okay. These feuds go back like generations. Anton, okay. always next to Galena at my lessons. Me, knowing Anton and Igor don't get along, a little bit awkward. Just telling yeah. you. Yeah. Because Galena yeah. would be like, I told him to work with Lukanen on this. And I'm like, Galena, do you know they don't like each other? Like, what? Like, Damn Whoa. it. <laughs> Hi. So, yeah. <laughs> this is, um, yeah. Balancing all the time. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, let's talk about Miss Deanna because. Um, in a game of Survivor, Evelyn, who was a little mouthy last year where they didn't go to the Olympics, Evelyn Walsh, um, let her opinion be known that she was not happy that Eric Radford and Vanessa James got sent to the Olympics. Uh, she has decided to go to college. Trent is going to continue on. Deanna is now like... <laughs> she stands to inherit the lot. <laughs> There may never have been a more American personality than Deanna Stilato. She might make Megan Duhamel look laid back. <laughs> Passive. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, what was your take on the first? Jonathan, listen, people talk about Botox. And remember, Deanna was an esthetician. <laughs> I'm not a medical doctor. I have never seen someone with better work done. Can I just tell you, she ages in reverse. I, <laughs> I don't know just the, just the right amount of like respect, okay? She looks like four years younger than last season. I don't know what she did over the summer, but- But it worked, yeah. You know, she's been like posting these images of her hiking on Sundays. She's having like, Super Soul Sunday with the girls. Maybe she's watching Oprah. I don't know what she is like. This intense being is like pulled and tucked in all the best ways. She's looking great. And I'm gonna tell you one thing. Anytime I've been attracted to a skater who's a male, you have stolen them from me. I like Nikolai Sorens and first he became Jonathan's, right? Yeah, he you did. You used to like the hairy ones first, then you look him at- I still do, I've got to. <laughs> Maxime Deschamps is mine, okay? Yeah, I think you can have that one. I think you can have that one. He cut his hair. You know, I was really offended when he had the man bun situation. Deanna dressed him in like a blouse for the short program. He looked great. Mm -hmm. He clearly likes intense people. And he's got a much better camel spin and extension than Nathan Bartholomew and Lance that side-by-side -side triple toe. He's a winner. Okay, he might be my future husband. I mean, he could deal with a real intense person. Okay. This could be it. <laughs> you know, we were talking about finding me an ice dance partner for the adult ice skating. And Kristen's like, yeah, we have to find someone on the level. And Igor's like, yeah, the level of intensity. You know, so, you know. Or who can handle said level of intensity. Yes, yeah. so the max, yeah. you know, these don't come around all the time. He might be a little bit of a unicorn. And I think, He's mine and you're not taking him. Okay, because if you okay, okay, fair enough. Fair put enough. up with Deanna, he can put up with me. All right. Agreed. I agree with that. He yeah. likes all of my skating updates on Instagram. I mean, he's very smart. I mean, so the I, next obvious step. <laughs> I mean, we'll be in Boston for Skate America, Maxim. You know, I just say just it. saying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's funny. Um, <clears throat> I mean, they have always had 
programs that were just enough different and interesting from everyone else's. So I have always liked that about this team and this year is no exception. Um, <clears throat> people will draw the comparisons because of the general connection between Snake Charmer and you know this sort of Egyptian take or whatever it is they're doing. Um, I find there's a little bit more cinematic, obviously, um, but they're, their in-betweens are just so interesting. Mm. Like often throughout the program, I'm like, oh, neat. Even like the, the entrance to the uh, death spiral, like just all these like unexpected moments that you're like, oh, that's cool. And they didn't have to do that, but and having done that. in happening in the free, yeah. Yeah, there's just a lot of sort of like, oh, neat kind of moments uh, to their skating. Um, and when they get the jumps, it's, it's really exciting. You know, the toes look very consistent for them right now. Well, so pay attention to the transition into and out of the toe, especially into the toe. They do a back outside counter into the turns, into the toe. I mean, it's very difficult, very and well executed. Frankly, Alexa and Brandon have other strengths, but the transition into their side-by-side -side jumps is not one of them. I think Alexa and Brandon, sorry, Deanna, objectively, they have more consistent throws, even if Alexa two foots them. I think um, that's the one area where Deanna and Max can really up is that second throw triple and making sure the throws are clean every time. Yeah. Lift for lift. Now, Alexa and Brandon have strong lifts, but I think Deanna and Max have stronger positions in those lifts. And he's and unique a ins and outs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is very interesting. And they took out that like split exit to the one lift that really bugged me last season. So okay. it's just, <laughs> I think her costume looks like a million bucks. You know what it is? They're individuals and, and they stick out in a positive way um, because no one else sort of provides that same aesthetic in the choreography. And I, I just really appreciate that right now. No, if she wins like the Canadian national title, does she also get the adult? Canadian national title? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Her routine, her program for that has props. Yeah. So <laughs> listen, listen. Doing a comedy with props one for her adult national set there. I mean, I think she could she could use a prop, right? Maybe a chair on the ice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone loves when there's a table and chairs in the exhibition, for sure. That's what I think when I see them dragging it out there. <laughs> Listen, one of my competitors who did, like he does the artistic portion and does the comedy, like he does them all, all right? Okay. Ryan Paget, and he works in theater. He did a program where he laid an egg. I mean, and apparently it was fantastic, but we have and never got- euphemism? Gotten, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. There was like, an egg that legit. like hatched. Oh. Yeah, and I haven't gotten the phone call about how, like, I think he had a head to head with the Viva who at National Showcase. I don't do that's for like all of these light entertainment. I don't know. I'm in the series. But the egg had something to do with 9 11, right? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, oh, yeah, I, <laughs> I am in the very serious division. I, I, have not, <laughs> I have not ventured into props, Jonathan. I was okay. thinking that solo dance or ice dance would be my next foray. For some reason, I don't think of myself with like a cape or baking a lasagna or laying an a egg. cane yeah a baton no I agree it's just agree. even though I'm silly in real life I'm a little bit more I don't know that you're silly though you can be funny and have a wit about you but it's not necessarily silly and prop stuff is a bit more silly well did you oh, see me doing Rhapsody in Blue in my friend's music room to the piano see but yet there was something very sincere about that interpretation. That's true. I, yeah. I don't know that I'm ready to be Scott Hamilton, but I don't know if Deanna's ready for the props either. Maybe she could no. do it. No. She could all. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Yeah, I mean, it's just a fascinating story that's unfolding for her because really she's it, right? I know. She's it in Canada at the moment. No. Should we send her back to Jim Peterson or some sort of, do you miss those interactions? I mean, her interaction with Jim Peterson, I really 
take the fact that Deanna used a Whitney Houston song that was going to be copyright claimed and blocked on YouTube because we don't get that interaction when she knew that they were going to get the pewter and Jim right. and Nate didn't. Right. She's like, Told you. Yeah, you don't want to be the smartest person on your team, do you? I'd want to be surrounded by people smarter. How about like the USFS didn't make it easy for her to switch countries. They didn't believe in her enough to give her the good partner, but then they didn't want to let her go either. Right. You know, if she does well at Skate America, you know, it's her against Alexa. Well, is there a third pair in there or is it really just the two of them? Oh, it's the two of them. Because I think Bruno's pair got Skate Canada, right? Yeah. So this is, wait a second. So that I'm not wrong. Okay, let's. Yeah, let's look this up. Listen, I we need a group photo of Brandon, <laughs> maybe with some playing cards or poker chips. Alexa, me, you, Deanna, Max. Max can be next to me. But um, <laughs> all right, so the pairs and Deanna. Julie Marcotte like this <laughs> laying down in the front. <laughs> Deanna and Max. Um, a team from the Netherlands, Daria Danilova and Mikhail. This is Daria Danilova. Where is she from? Born in Moscow. Yeah, it was like yeah, she's I mean, fucking Dutch. Okay, uh, sorry. The Crawfords. Oh, Delilah's pair. She can be in the photo too. Yeah, oh my. our our good friends. Uh, they represent Sweden. Uh, the Ukrainian pair, Alexa and Brandon uh, Smirnova and Siancia and TBD uh, from the U.S. So yeah, it's quite the field Jonathan yeah six pairs at these Grand Prix it's a little sparse this year it's why yeah, we need we're walking away with medals I mean that, that's we've got to see like I could see someone still choking with such an opportunity in front of them, of even though it's really right there yeah but that's what makes pairs fun yeah you know they're either going to be spectacular or really not yeah yeah, I find we operate in extremes in the world of the Paris discipline. Yeah. Well, what? That's going to be an event. All right. So, what do you what What's your take on the Atari situation? You brought that she's still in the news all the time. Well, we saw a couple of the programs coming out of that camp, but I, when you posted the, <laughs> like, I love the idea that she's in a hard hat, like coming up with some last minute ideas for the building that's already like laid out and structured. I did have to um, screenshot that perfect moment for the thumbnail, and I hope that you're, you appreciated the artistry in that. Yes, yes. Because it almost reminded me of like B-roll footage that you inserted there faces into but it was the actual coverage it was so now, funny. what i like is that the fans who have only followed this you know since diana has been here think that this means that everything is fine this rink has been in construction for of course years, right yeah i mean again it's like basically done practically in the thing but i it's love i love that they planned this like photo op moment they're like okay there's a lot of shit about what is a terry doing in the u.s now we take a like it's also transparently planned like yep. when they had the injured girl give to ross of the flowers now a terry is doing this right so so did you alexa the sketches look pretty cool for it. that sort of like all white and they had like cool outdoor space I don't know, it didn't look yeah. interesting. Um, now alexa was in the news today and it was a, a win okay because valieva In an interview with the AIF, Valieva noted that it was a shame for her not to be able to participate in international competitions. It's a shame, of course, that you can't go to international competitions, but the main rivals are all in Russia, and sport is about competition between the best and the best, said Valieva. It's a pity that I still have to wait until I receive my Olympic medal, Kinnear wrote on the social network. <laughs> Well, she's right. Point, Alexa, you know what? Yeah. Ooh, where's my medal? Yeah. That's why we love her. All right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and we love her 3,000 miles away on the other side of the country where she can't hit us if she doesn't like what we say. <laughs> and we like Deanna across the border. That's right. That's and we right. Like at a safe distance. On the ice in Norwood with us at a comfortable with distance. With distance. With distance. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Blending in. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Well, yeah, that Valdeva um, 
video also that got posted of her like surfing and doing all that stuff with Solovia or whatever. A lot of easier triples, right? Yeah. Yeah, correct. I, that was clear. Also, Terry was in the US for a third time and then they posted a video of her at the rink and the, but they didn't go. It was interesting is that the Russian press is starting to turn on her. Mm. So there's a journalist who wrote an article that got taken down because they got the girl to take it down so that she could secure a release to another country a couple years ago. And he actually did oh. a podcast about a Terry that was on Sports Roo with another writer from Match TV. So they are like Dmitry Kuznetsov and this other, like they are starting to speak out against her a little bit. Like, and you know that in Russia, <laughs> not a free press, you know? So for that to be allowed says that something is amiss, right? Mm. They are starting to point out how often she is leaving the country. There are also skaters that allegedly have like contracts with Match TV for interviews and information. You know, her firm grasp, uh, grasp on everything is switching, especially with Plushenka being so pro-Putin lately. Uh, they talk yeah, about- Yeah, it was clearly a move she wasn't gonna play. And so Plushenko saw the opportunity. Yeah. If you notice, Plushenka had a great quote today because Drobiasco is now also in the Navka show and gonna be like denied. It says two-time Olympic champion of getting Plushenka spoke out about the figure skater, Margarita Drobiasco, that she could be deprived of Lithuanian citizenship due to participation in the Tatiana Navka ice show. Now, Trobiasko was Russian before they represented Lithuania, but um, he goes, do they want to deprive Trobiasko of citizenship? What are you? What a horror. What is going on in general? I think it's outrageous. Well, what have athletes have to do with it, especially since it's a commercial show? Certainly people go crazy, although there's nothing surprising here. I had a contract with the Japanese. We sold our shows Swan Lake, Cinderella, and the Nutcracker. Even with a valid contract, they refused. I could not go to perform. So these sanctions also extend to me and they didn't pay any fees. They just said they wouldn't work with me. Meanwhile, Plushenko has been like at every Putin rally, like, you know. Like, yeah. But it, sports and politics. Of it. Yeah. No it's context it. should be entirely separate, right? The Z and all the shit. Yeah. Will Russia help Margarita if she is deprived of her citizenship? I think it will help. Russia helps everyone. Oh, they do. They really do. Um, <laughs> this is the kindest and most reliable country. <laughs> okay. I think that frequently when I think of- Yeah. The, I mean, they're a oh, real I, Swiss bank account, right? Uh, yeah. Therefore, I, of course, Russia will that. help. Then the decision is up to Margarita. Sports yeah. is like a fever dream, Jonathan. Yeah. Like, have you ever read, like sometimes reading the headlines on Sports Room when they are interviewing Tarasova and like they're getting really nationalistic, you think that you're getting high. Also, when they interview Lyshev and he always puts his foot in his mouth. Like today, he told us that Valieva's coaches have nothing to worry about. They're protected by Vladimir Putin. Yeah. <laughs> That's the whole- We know freaking, that, but you're not supposed to say that, ideally. <laughs> that's the whole issue with state-sponsored doping, maybe? Hello? Right. right. That man, a complete gift. And remember, Ateri has been trying to distance herself from Lyshev, and he just keeps talking. He just keeps, well, talking he keeps to blowing the all their gossip all the time. How many times last season did he come out with all the news as a spoiler? And she was like, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And then the next day it was announced. That's why they call him. And the report yeah. is so shady that they call him after they think that he might have had a couple. Okay. They, these Russian reporters, I mean, God bless. All right. Houses. Yeah. I mean, it's like the real housewives every day on Sports Room. All right. <laughs> I mean, there's like, really, really, like a girl will be like, my coach said I was overweight. And then they'll call every coach in Russia and they'll be like, well, she was really fat. Okay. Or she didn't win. So why are we even listening to her? That's the, the other one that's sort of- These are actual things. things that happen on Sports Room. I mean, yeah, yeah. it's a fever dream. I, I don't know how to say it other than, like, oh my gosh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's tough. Now, having said that, uh, you posted Fedotov's new program. Yes. Obsessed, love we it. We love it the most. My I son, love it we so love much. it. Yeah, because then you also posted Petrosian's new 
program, which- but What's his brother kicked out of Team Tuparitza? Remember he had, Arsene has the younger brother, Artem, who was less right. talented. I don't know if he's still there. Now, Sasha Fegan from Hackensack has a brother that also skates. And Sasha actually like coaches his brother. They both work with Roman, so. Oh, okay. So Roman Serov also coaches another adult skater, Josh P. <laughs> yes. And we first had a group lesson with him. And because we talked about the Angels of Plushenka, he called us the Angels of Serov. But he talks to us like we're Charlie's angels. We'd be like, hello, angels. So he'll text me, <laughs> hello, my angel. What time are you skating today, right? Amazing. And he okay. got really jealous when he found out that I started working with Yuri. So I will play them against each other. And okay. be like, well, Yuri never Are you that. someone's devil? That's the real question. <laughs> yeah. He would always call me my second favorite angel. Angel number one. That's and crazy. then last week he goes, you should land your double cell. It'll be a good birthday present for the other angel. <laughs> it's like, he really enjoyed- See, that's his version of the Atiri pyramid we were doing. <laughs> that's okay. Because Roman is someone that you have to pay attention to. And you wanna know why? Because there was a mother who loved his coaching so much that she married him, okay? And there were other mothers at the rink that were jealous that a skating mother married him and had like big issues with that. Even though his he has a stepdaughter and they had sons, they weren't competitors and they were still rivals and mad about this. That is a fact, okay? Okay. okay. You but really anytime, got all the tea, yeah. Roman's, oh, Roman's wife was a rhythmic gymnast and she knows what's going on in skating too. Like she'll say things like, after she saw me in the Christmas show last year, and she was like, when do you compete? And I was like, oh, in March. Oh, good, you still have time to improve. <laughs> she was not wrong, Jonathan, but like, wow. But what, what is the point? What is accomplished with that statement? I, it's not my style. Right. She was a rhythmic gymnast. You yeah. know the culture. She yes, felt, unfortunately, yeah. She felt I still had time to improve, Jonathan. <laughs> Great. You know what? And you did, and you did, Dave. So when Cayetana pulled off her triples last year at nationals, I may have texted Roman and said, oh good, the marriage will last another year. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> marriage has more time to improve. Yes, this is good. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Now, how about this Victor Petrenko article? Oh my God. Unfortunate. Ba and basically you preemptively had covered it on um, as the blade turns. You know, this is Well, I don't think the New York Times was late to the party in this. I mean I, I, mean... I thought so as well. It seemed sort of an afterthought. Um I it's tricky. But for all the reasons that you had already pointed out, I, I understand the dilemma. I feel bad because they're calling his daughter for comment. She is stuck in a horrible spot. I mean, they didn't answer any of them, so they called Galena and she didn't answer either. Well, I mean, sometimes I think that's your best bet here. You know what I mean? You're damned if you do, damned if you don't. I mean, no matter what you say, it's gonna be. They should have called from a private number because she might've known. Did they call Oksana? She would have answered. No, but she sent me the article. Oh, okay, so she was following. Yeah, she would not have done off the show that we know. She would not have, no, but. Yeah, it's messy, it's messy stuff. I still think, look, I can't explain any of it. <laughs> like you can't, but, but until recently, I don't know that they identify as Ukrainian. Well, I know that he represented Ukraine in the Olympics and carried the flag. I, a lot of the Soviet athletes from the former Soviet seem to identify, especially if they didn't live there. I know that people aren't gonna wanna hear this who watch were Ukrainian. And I almost feel that the Soviet sports machine was really, their culture more was than their anything culture else. Yeah. And identity more than anything else. Especially when they were in an elevated status and were getting apartments and cars and able to travel the world. I, and the most impressionable. 
when it was taught on them that they only had one purpose and it was to serve this particular government. And might have like lacked a education in the school of hard knocks about how this was going to play out. I don't know if that- For those who didn't benefit from the system. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's funny because there was a skating father that said to me like, don't talk about Victor, whether or not he's fighting in the war. Well, Victor took care of that for us um, by performing a Navka show. And now this is all out in the public, so. Yeah. I know, it's unfortunate. I had nothing but good experiences with him. That's all I can say, but I- uh, Yeah. Love, love. I know, I know. It's- um, I know, and what does Galita think? She, like, Victor is her favorite. She's nicer to him than her kids. No, no, I'm not kidding. Yeah. Like, that is, that is not, a, that, that is not hyperbole. That is not, a, he is her favorite. Okay. <laughs> like, that is the real deal. Maybe her dog she likes more. <laughs> <laughs> Except for his double axle exit. Yeah. <laughs> Very sloppy, Robert. Very sloppy. <laughs> but you know what? Robert did two triple axles in Philadelphia. Hey, hey. And Lautovo would like us to know that her daughter has the top score uh, for juvenile, uh, you know, right there. Oh, so, yeah. there you have it. Yeah. All right. And uh, the solo dancer, Brooke, won her competition in California. I would have liked the score to have been a little higher, Brooke. But I think we're going to work on these levels before the nationals, and um, we would like her. Um, yeah, that's what the summer is for. Yeah, yeah. She needs to be ready in September to bring honor oh. uh, to Gregor Studio. Okay. So it. now Brooke, we're going to hurry, hurry. <laughs> some of these elements, we're going to figure out the levels on. Maybe get these turns a little cleaner, and I think we're going to be okay. She's going to bring the spirit of. I want to watch those nationals with you. You, you totally sold me on this. This is. This is the real deal. The solo nationals. It's like Krigor Studio against like two people from Marina Zueva. <laughs> like Jonathan, Marina allegedly is known for walking in the judges room and telling people how they should judge. Those are just infamous stories that we've heard over the years. And I choose to believe that they are true. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't there. I don't know. I've only heard. But it's not I out of the realm of possibility. <laughs> <laughs> If Marina Zueva told me how to judge, I think I, I might listen. Okay. A hundred percent I would. Yeah. Well, maybe if she actually like, you know, she's been supposed to do interviews before and then reschedules at the last moment and great creates Russian chaos. Like the Russians don't agree to a schedule. Like that's not like a right. thing there. They like, oh, you're going to come to the rink and we're going to skate at nine. You get to this rink at nine. Why don't we do 10.30? You know, like they just, and you're like, I like a thing to do hello like this yeah. russian scheduling okay. is okay <laughs> like olga in boston same way all right like it is oh, they are in charge it's a big okay. power play. marina you're is on their team. time yeah okay but apparently we drive the same car so i feel very connected to marina she's got great taste all right marina mobile okay. she always knew a classic right she okay. always <laughs> <gasps> oh man, Jonathan. So what is your moment of the week this week? Gosh, you know, I, I was flabbergasted when I read about Evelyn. So I kind of said to what that meant for Deanna. But I still think my moment of the week is like kind of a solid effort in both programs from Gracie Gold with that triple triple. Like go ahead on. What a moment. Good for her. If you're picking Gracie, then I'm going to pick Deanna's side-by-side -side triple toes and the, her overall Madison Chalk fantasy for the first minute of the free, I was stunned and intrigued. She kept, uh, she kept Were you guessing. charmed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was your moan of the week? Hold it, Edge, and look sexy, everyone. I know. 